What's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I got a great video in store for you today. This is something I wanted to do for a very long time and I just recently got a little extra motivation to put this all together. Um, there's no question there's a lot of fear and uncertainty in the world today. We're told that in order to stay safe we got to isolate from one another and distance from one another and that just goes against every fiber of my being. Uh, humans were not designed to be alone. We're supposed to fellowship with one another and be in community with one another and this act of kindness that I just got uh, just reminded me that there's no better community than the Jeep community. So what happened was I was looking for uh, some parts and I realized that uh, a buddy of mine, Joe, just Jeep and Joe from the Jeep shop, he had the parts I was looking for. I reached out to him and uh, they were still available. He sent them right away the next day. No questions asked, no charge. He said, uh, it's just what Jeepers do, man. We have each other's back, and uh, that just blew me away. So I want to thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. And um, I want to have Joe on my channel. So I reached out to Joe. He sent me a video of him and his Jeep. So go check out Joe's Jeep right now. Here we are. Welcome, Joe. Hey, Dan. It's Joe from the Jeep Shop. And hey, everybody out on the interwebs. This is a really exciting opportunity to show off my Jeep on Dan's channel. And uh, Dan, I appreciate the invitation. It's going to be exciting, so why don't we do a quick walk around of my 99 XJ. Okay, I got this in August of 2019 off a uh, small dealer down in Newark, Delaware. Kept it all stock. Interior is nice and clean. Look at the rockers. Spotless. Got power seats on this bad boy. Overhead console. I've done a couple things that were non-stock, but they were stock for Jeeps in general. I took a... Uh, a ZJ auto dimming rear view mirror and install that. That was fun. Took that idea from you, Dan H. <laughs> and I also put in a rear power power source for the kids in the back to charge their phones and their games. And I also installed rear headrests in the back as well. Now they were stocked with the Jeeps from Europe. Um, actually, it was pretty funny. The padding for the rear seats uh, has the knockouts for the headrest mechanics. Um, so it was a pretty easy thing. Just had to make a couple cuts and install them and away you go. Rear headrest, a little bit safer for the family and all the folks that sit in the back. But that's my 99 XJ. No rust anywhere, just a beautiful piece. And yes, folks, that is purple. That is the purple uh, pearl metallic, I believe they call that color. It looks blue, but when you clean it and uh, polish it up, it's a deep purple and it's, uh, it's pretty sweet actually. I have no plans to lift this. I'm going to keep this totally stock, and um, it's a real great joy to ride. I love it. But uh, Dan, thank you very much for having me on the channel. I appreciate the opportunity to show off my Jeep to you and all of your fans. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and take care. So again, thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate what you've done for me and the Jeep community. I was so blown away by this. I wanted to keep it going. So uh, I reached out to my buddies, Doug and Eric from d &E in the Garage. I said, listen guys, I wanna to put together a motivational video for you Jeepers so we can come together, have each other's backs, carry us through this rough time. Um, we wanna let one another know that we're still here for you. If anybody wants to reach out to me, Doug, Eric, uh, anybody in my Jeep community, just send an email, send a message in the comments. You know, we're, we're still here. Life still goes on. We're going to get through this. So here's Doug and Eric for a little motivational jeeping. Uh, go check them out. What's going on, Doug and Eric? Hey, What's up, Buck? I'm Doug. And I'm Barry. We're Dean in the garage. So guys, we're here in a little babbling book in New Jersey to say that we're here, we're still here, and why we're still going through these questionable times. Number one being our Jeeps and the Jeep community. Yeah, man, there's one thing you can always count on. If you are a car guy or a Jeep guy or a truck guy or whatever, that car culture, that brotherhood is something you can lean into whenever you might need a little something to help you stand up through the days. And with the difficult, crazy times we're having right now, I have found a ton of comfort getting online. You know, we can't be out there meeting the Jeepers, meeting other people in person. You can get online, you can get on some forums, get into the YouTube community. There's no better group of people than car guys out there. Am I right, Eric? No, you're completely right. No, no better feeling just getting away in the garage, turning a little while with you guys watching or not watching even, just going away and just taking yourself, separating yourself from the world. And the little jeeping always helps that. Hey, if you can, get out to the garage, spin a couple wrenches. If you can't, go inside, go on YouTube, and don't just watch the video. Go down in the comments, make a couple new friends. In the comments of our videos, there are some people that talk to each other on every one of our videos. They're not necessarily talking to us, they talk to each other. They're like, hey, whatever, man, you know, what do you think about this? You know, there's a whole community 
built around these vehicles, whether it's uh, in the forums, in chat rooms, in YouTube videos. So if you're looking for something to help get you through the day, know that we're all out here feeling the same way. We are gonna make it through this. Someday we will be able to be doing this kind of stuff in the creeks and in the deserts and in the woods and uh, life will go back to normal. But until then, we're all out here in the interwebs, cyber friends, just waiting to talk about <laughs> yeah. some good rusty, dusty, crusty old heaps. Yeah, you guys can always find us on Instagram, Facebook. If you need to get someone to talk to for like 10 minutes, we're there. I'm always on there. Doug's on Instagram. We got you guys handled. That's all there is to it, man. Now, we need to get these Jeeps out of this stupid Babbly Creek. We just want to give a big thanks to Project Dan for go ahead and putting this together. Great idea, Dano. Yes, sir. Keeping the world together. Dan is one of the most inspirational people I've ever met. Best dude I've ever known, hands down. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> all right, we out. A little bit of an added bonus, I'm gonna give you guys a little overlanding trick, right? If you're out and out on the trail for the day, but you want a hot meal, here's what you do. Just take your lunch, wrap it in foil, put it in uh, right here. Especially if you got a four liter, there's a nice little crook right there between the upper rat hose and your fan. Zip tie her on there. Come on. Oh, this is gonna be some piping hot, smoked, Oh yeah, dank, it. <laughs> dank meats. Look at that, that juice don't run if it's cold like that. You see that? This little, I know it's a little compressed. That's from the zip tie, that's no problem. Oh, so good. I love smoked chicken. Mmm. Kid tested, D&E approved. Thank you so much, Doug. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate the kind words. You guys have been an inspiration to me. Uh, you're a great asset to the Jeep community. And we're gonna kick off the Jeeps Worldwide video. Um, I reached out to Jeepers all across the world, the people that I've talked to, and uh, I'm getting them to send in their Jeeps. So we're gonna motivate one another, we're gonna inspire one another, and uh, here we go. We're kicking off the Jeep Worldwide Tour. Uh, we're gonna stop with three buddies in the US, so right now we're gonna go up to New Hampshire, and we're gonna say hello to Kyle the Bearded Jeeper. USA. What's up guys, Bearded Jeeper here from Claremont, New Hampshire. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my Jeep. So this is my Jeep. This is Mudzilla. Had to get the license plates to match. It's a 2010 Jeep Wrangler JK Islander Edition. This is lifted three and a half inches on 37 inch tires. These are the uh, Federal Cudigore tires. I think that's how you say it. For suspension, I have the three and a half inch rock crawler coils, all stock control arms and stuff still. Got the Synergy one ton steering setup and the track bar and everything. And that has held up phenomenally. Still running a Dana 30 up front, even though I already snapped one and uh, I was dumb enough, I guess, to put another one under there. But it's still holding up to these 37s pretty well. Got my logo on the hood there. Need to do some rust management of these fenders. Got the Poison Spider uh, rocker, rock brawler, rock guards. And let me tell you, these things take a hit. They're strong, they protect the body so you don't get any unneeded war damage. Off-road uh, taillights, they're flush mount. So that way you can, uh, don't have to worry about trees hitting them and smashing them. The Reaper off-road, front and rear bumpers. Got a Warren Xeon 10S winch. So that is able to tow me out of pretty much anything. And this is Project Zip Tie. This is my 1999 Jeep Cherokee. Um, slowly working on this, building it up. It's getting one ton axles, 05 Ford Super Duty axles. So this thing's gonna be a real rock crawler, real beast. I just got done installing the frame stiffeners in the front. Still gotta do the mids and the rears. It's getting a whole lot of work done, so that's gonna be a real fun time when I get this thing finished. Now, what does the jeeping off-road community mean to me? It's a really great community where a bunch of people can get together and go out exploring in the woods and you can find these really unique places that you can't get to with just your average ordinary vehicle. So you need a Jeep or an off-road rig some kind of buggy uh, and you just get to meet a ton of really cool people and have really great experiences go have lunch near a lake out in the middle of the woods that nobody even knew existed uh, it's really fun really great community to be a part of and I also have to say 
I love the fact that you can be unique, you can be yourself. I can take this JK, I can take zip tie my Cherokee and I can build them and so can someone else. Somebody can get the exact same rig and build it and it's gonna look completely different because you're gonna take it and put your mods on it, your color seats, your uh, hood, your bumper, your winch, and you're gonna make it unique to yourself. So it's a really unique sport and you can do what you want to your rigs and kind of show off a little bit of your personality in your rig. But that's it for me guys. As always, stay bearded, stay jeeping. I'm out. Thank you, Kyle, so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I can't wait to go visit Kyle. We got a little special video we're gonna make uh, one day, hopefully. We're going to uh, add to the battle-worn style of his XJ, Project Zip Tie. Uh, it's gonna involve his hood and maybe a nine millimeter and a shotgun. <laughs> we're gonna see if we could make it happen. So thank you, Kyle. Uh, now we're gonna head over to Pennsylvania and we're gonna say what up to John uh, GTM Off-Road. What up, John? What's up guys, my name is John and I run the channel JTM Off-Road based out of Western Pennsylvania. All right, so here's my Jeep. It's a 1995 YJ. It's got the 2.5 liter engine with five speed behind it. We've got a Dana 30 up front locked and a Ford 8.8 .8 in the back locked welded. I bought it about six years ago, slowly been building it over time. It's nothing crazy, it's just a trail rig. I don't really drive it on the road much, I'd like to, um, but for the, for the most part, I just uh, actually just trailer it everywhere. Since I bought my Jeep, uh, you know, about six years ago, bone stock, building it slowly, I've had huge help from the Jeep community. And the Jeep community is just one of the, I, I don't know, maybe there's a lot of other good ones out there, but it's one of the better ones, I would think. Everyone is super helpful. Everyone always just gives you as much knowledge as they can. They don't have a problem helping you out at all. I don't know how many times I've been given stuff for free. They're like, oh, here, just take it. And great thing is when you do that, you end up getting so much other stuff that you don't need in the long run and you give it to other people and it just keeps, just keeps giving and giving. So it's just a great community. I've been a part of a club uh, almost as long as I've had the Jeep. Actually might be as long as I've had the Jeep. I've made a lot of great friends, uh, had a lot of great times with them. Going out wheeling, I've learned so much from them. It's just such a great, great community to be a part of. But that's it, JTM Off-Road, that's my Jeep. See you later. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for sharing that YJ. I love that Jeep. Uh, not only does he have a killer YJ, he also has a Chevy Avalanche that's lifted six inches. So go check out JTM Off-Road. Uh, we want more videos from you, John. You better get back here soon. Um, yeah, so next stop, we're going to go head over to Bug and Boo and the state of Washington. They're going to be our last stop in the United States before we head overseas. All right, what's up, Bug? Hey, guys, I'm Bug from It's a Bug's Life. I'm Boo. And we started our YouTube channel back in December of 2018, and we based it around our 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ. We've had a lot of fun over the year and a half, trimming fender flares, modifying the front and back bumper, doing some Raptor liner, and rock, rock sliders. sliders. Yep. So Boo's taught me everything that I know, and we have a lot of fun working on it on the weekend. Yeah, it's been a, a lot of fun for Bug not doing really anything like this, and mm -hmm. it was tough finding a, a stock XJ that hadn't been beat on. We almost gave up, and then we found this one, and we've just had an absolute blast. We're going to replace the speakers. <laughs> and it's been so fun working with Bug. Okay, so, look Buggy, look at you. <laughs> and she gets right in there. Boom! She's cutting, she's welding, she's painting, she's wrenching, she's all of it. I could not be luckier having a bug like Aww, this. thanks baby. Today we're up outside of Greenwater, yeah. up in the Cascade Mountains and just having an absolute blast up here, like exploring, finding new places to camp. And we're proud to represent the Pacific Northwest yeah. on Dan's tribute for Jeeps around the world. Project Dan H, we love you. You've been awesome with our channel. And um, Beach Jeep. Beach Jeep. <laughs> no 20s, 2021. So thanks Project Dan.
Thank you so much, Bug. Man, I am so blown away by the difference in scenery. The Pacific Northwest is gorgeous, and I can't wait to visit it. Um, Bug, I think you also have a 93 XJ, and uh, there's a 70s Bronco that I think you're hiding from us. So you better get that on soon, man. We want to see that also. Not a Jeep, but it's still badass. So thank you so much, Bug. Thank you, Boo. We love you guys. And uh, here we go. We're going to send it now all the way across the Pacific. We're going to go to Newcastle, Australia. And we're on the other side of the world, and we're going to see how they drive Jeeps on the other side. This is my Jeep Frank, and I've owned him for about five years. He's a 2000 Jeep Cherokee Classic. He's got about 160,000 K on the clock, which is about 80,000 miles. So he's pretty much a baby in mileage terms. I'm trying to keep him pretty much a stock with a few little upgrades, like an aftermarket transmission cooler, mog springs, gas adjust struts, and some polyurethane bushings. He's pretty much still a work in progress. Paint works a little bit rough for a 20 year old car, but hardly any rust. Apart from a bit of sunburn from the Aussie sun, pearl forest green is an awesome color. Not my first choice, but when this one came up, with the low mileage, just had to go for him. Pretty clean inside. It took me about six months to find one which hadn't been modified or ruined by backpackers. So as you see, he's a daily driver. Carries the kids around and the dog in the back. He even got the stock standard stereo. I don't want to put an aftermarket one in because I just think the old school ones look really awesome. And as most Jeeps of this era, he's got a saggy roof liner. Oh, that's going to be sorted one day. Probably what you don't see often is the dash mat. But here in Australia, that's the sun. It's pretty much the same as your harsh winters in America. It just absolutely destroys anything. So any plastics, just get ruined so hopefully that will help keep the sun out from damaging the dash under the hood it's pretty much stock Got a slightly more open air filter you know, on the European and some other markets it had like an air resonator box so it took that off just for the standard air box hose yeah. new spark plugs rebuilt all the cooling system with a new fan, water pump, hoses, etc. Running a larger oil filter, you can always write the mileage and the date on that so you can't forget when you've got it on. Out back a fit a, a tow bar and a Banks power exhaust. The bank's exhaust muffler which is pretty much straight through and the dynamax catalytic converter as you can see there's hardly any rust underneath and everything is pretty clean i suppose that helps with the oil leaks keeps the rust away Jeep Frank. I uh, hope you enjoyed having a look around. Yeah, he gets used every day from uh, taking the kids to preschool to picking up supplies from the hardware store and then taking us down to the beach. So if I see you on the road I'll give you a friendly Jeep wave. See ya!
Thank you, Will, for sharing your XJ. That is one beautiful green XJ. Follow Will on Instagram. Uh, he's Jeep Kook. I've been following Frank the Tank XJ for a long time. That is one of the cleanest XJs I've ever seen. So cool. All right, so now we're just going to shoot up to Queensland, Australia. We're going to say what's up to Roy. Uh, Roy has got a Jeep similar to Beach Jeep, only it's right-hand drive. So what's up, Roy? Greetings, Dan. This is Roy from Australia. I thought I'd give you a... Uh... A quick tour of my Jeep XJ Cherokee uh, 2000 model Australian version or the right hand drive version. So I initially bought this XJ for a thousand dollars off a guy that had overheated it. When I had a look at it initially um, I wasn't sure whether it had the cracked head or or something else. Um, luckily Dan told me to look for a couple of things and uh, that really helped out. What it ended up being was that the uh, gasket was actually sucking air in and compressing the cooling system. So although it was a, a small issue in terms of changing the head gasket, uh, luckily Dan made me aware that this particular model in the 01 suffered from uh, faulty cylinder heads. So he advised me to go down to your local wrecker and, um, and yeah, find a, a different head, which I did. I, I ended up getting a, a tuppy head, and since then it's been fantastic. So XJ Rust, uh, luckily this particular one only had a little bit of slight surface rust, as you can see there. It's not too bad, so I'm gonna sand that down. So I'm not sure whether I'm actually just going to paint the roof with bed liner and bed liner the uh, the bumper bumper guard or even perhaps um, bed liner the uh, the bonnet as well. So here you have the famous XJ driver's door click. Uh, I don't know if it sounds any different um, in Australia, but it's annoying as hell. So it's something we have to get around to fixing. And unfortunately, the rear door driver side, passenger side, uh, also um, clicks too, so <laughs> bit of work there, uh, you can hear from the other side, perfect, so maybe Dan, I can send you the doors from my my Silver XJ and you can send me the doors from um, the Beach Jeep, so we can swap around. A couple of things that I noticed, differences between the US and Australian models, as you can probably see already, is there's a requirement in Australia that they must all have rear seat headrests. And uh, we have to have these indicators on the side front panels. Probably the other difference is the, the placing of the mud guards. For some reason, I don't know why, but they put the mud guards all the way back on the rear. So a big shout out to Dan for um, the video on, on how to wire electric seats. Uh, as you can see, I've done all my wiring. I've just got to put my front electric seats in. I'm just waiting on a fuse um, and uh, it'll, it'll run perfectly. I'm actually even thinking of um, putting in some elements to get some heated seats going there. So uh, let's see. Uh, just a quick mention on, on the Australian version of the XJ. They came standard with select track, upcountry suspension, the tow pack. ABS, uh, yeah, so there was a couple of extra goodies. Oh, and cruise control as well. So there was a, a number of things the exported XJs uh, got as standard, as you can see. Oh, and electric windows. I forgot to mention electric windows. And four speaker stereo systems as well. So as you can see, the headline is spot on. So I did quite well. Um, I think the car had been garaged. That's probably why I was so lucky. As you can see, 273 kilometers, 273,000 kilometers on the clock, which is pretty good. Um, I think that's probably about 150,000 miles in the US Imperial system. So there you have it, my 2000 XJ Classic uh, from Australia. Thanks Dan for all your help and, and keep that channel going. Uh, it's it's invaluable resource, so thank you so much.
So thank you so much, Roy. I really appreciate the kind words. I've been talking with Roy for a little over a year, and uh, it's kind of sad that the car culture in Australia doesn't really hold Jeeps in a, in a high regard. So they get uh, scrapped, they get torn down really easily. No one seems to, um, to uh, cherish the Jeeps out there like the way uh, Roy and Will do. So thank you guys for uh, holding down the XJs in Australia. You're doing a great job. Anytime you guys need any XJ advice, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I'm there for you. And uh, yeah, now we're going to go up to Japan and see Eddie. Japan. Hey, Dan. It's Eddie from Japan. Uh, just going to show you a little bit about my ZJ I have here. Uh, I got it from a friend a few months ago. It's been sitting here for about over three years. I'm not running. So yeah, I got it back working and driving again. Uh, it's picked up a nasty engine tick, but we'll see what I can do to make it roadworthy. So I don't know much about the interior, but it's got a the wood lining fabric seats, pretty comfy. Uh, we had a problem with the headliner, if you can see that. It was trash, so I pretty much took it out, uh, scrubbed it down, and just spray painted it. Uh, headlining fabrics really expensive in Japan. It's I think a hundred bucks just for a meter squared. I've got a spare in the back, all my tools and junks in the back. There's a back seats. Pretty I haven't vacuumed it yet. Pretty dirty but not so bad. Yeah I've uh, put LEDs in the lights to make them brighter instead of that that yellow but yeah I want to put in a overhead console here I got the, the wiring from you in the harness and I'm gonna pick up a overhead console in Japan that I found cheap I want to upgrade the GDM unit here doesn't work and I picked one up from you as well so yeah I will replace that eventually I'm gonna put a new Android or some touchscreen GPS navigation thing here it's pretty dusty at the moment but some storms recently um, so it's not so clean. Uh, I don't actually have, it's not registered yet in Japan to get your car registered. It's a bit of a fiasco. Uh, and being a 20, it's a 96 CJ, so a 24 year old car, uh, it's really expensive. It's going to be about a thousand dollars to get it registered if I do it myself. Maybe 1500 if I get a company to do it. I don't know much about the rims, but there they are. The tires are really good for sitting for three years. I just pump them up and it's nice. I'll show you the engine. There we go. I think it's flipped from what you guys have in America, because it's a right-hand drive. Uh, I changed the spark plugs myself. I pulled out the fuel rail and the throttle body and cleaned all the Fuel injectors were pretty clogged and all, they were nasty. No fuel was getting through. So I pulled that whole thing out, hand, hand cleaned everything, put it back in and it works pretty well. Yeah, that's it. I'll start her up and I'll show you what she sounds like. So yeah, that's that engine tick or whatever. But I don't know, I, I took your advice and put some ZDDP zinc stuff in there and it lowered the noise a bit but I've got a full new I bought I spent 50 bucks and got a whole new oil change kit so I'll put that through soon um, once I get it registered and running on the road for a while took it on the road twice and it drives really nice but yeah I really need to get it registered so I can drive it legally and go on trips if you have any more questions about the ZJ or what I've got in Japan hit me up thanks for having a look bye Thank you, Eddie. Thank you for getting that footage into me. I really appreciate it. Uh, best of luck with the restoration. I know it's not easy getting parts out there from Japan. So if there's anything I could do, let me know. I'll see if I can send you whatever you need. Um, now we're going to another place I sent parts to. We're going to the Sultanate of Oman in the Middle East. Now, uh, I was trying to get in touch with two people that um, I communicated with in the past. Uh, Tariq. I sent Tariq some Jeep parts. Uh, couldn't get any videos, but he did send a couple images. 
is. He is also restoring a ZJ, and check out that paint job, man. That is looking sweet. Uh, it's interesting to see the slight variations of Jeeps across the world. Um, their turn signal markers are amber, not like the ones that we have that are clear. So best of luck, man, on that restoration. Again, if you need any more parts, hit me up. I'll do my best to source something for you. I'm still looking for those little vent covers in the back. Um, they're hard to pull, man. They're brittle and they break, but I will do my best. So thank you, Tariq. Uh, now we're also going to go see Yusuf's XJ, man. Yusuf and his buddies tear up the dunes in their XJs. So I got some clips for you. Check out these awesome XJs tearing up the desert. Oh man, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Yusuf, for sharing those clips. Stay safe out there when you're tearing up the desert. And thank you to Tariq again. Good luck on your ZJ build. I really appreciate it. So now we're going to go head over to Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and we're going to say what's up to Michael and his ZJ. Hey Dan, I'm Michael from the Netherlands. I live in Amsterdam, beautiful town. And I drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee from 98 with a 4.0 liter engine and a sunroof which is also one of my favorite things about this Jeep because you see them at the 5.9ers but you don't see them that often on a 4.0 uh, it's a limited edition I did an interior swap of a 5.9 uh, including the audio system, as you can see in the back there is the uh, soundbar. I also did a uh, swap of the uh, 5.9 leather knobs for the transmission and the transfer case and the e-brake, which is really nice. It's on Bluetooth module on it. Also, I have the stock audio system. This is actually one from the States because you don't have the, have those with the uh, equalizer option in the, in the in Europe. Um, I also repaired the Infinity sound system. So this is the vehicle from outside. It has slightly bigger tires and a lift kit. So this is the uh, 5.9 interior on a 4.0. So as you can see here, uh, it's the white pinstripe. Um, the previous owner had repainted the sides of this car, so there's no pinstripe on it. Um, I bought a bugler pinstriping tool and I tried to remake it. So as you can see I have the 5.9 receiver installed. Uh, also a lot of work because I pulled all these wires and I have to make sure that they fit nice on the uh, on this um, receiver. I really love these old radios and this cool 90s board computer. All right, Dan, thank you for having me on your show. And uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to show off my Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, hopefully you could understand me well because uh, I'm not a native English speaker, so I'll probably have a weird Dutch English accent. Anyways, back to you, Dan. Man, Michael, that is one sweet ZJ. I'm really digging the 5.9 interior inside the straight six. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Reminds me of the General Grievous, ZJ. Um, all right, last but not least, we're going to head over to see Jake. Jake has got a awesome Chili Pepper Red 99XJ in England. This thing is sweet also. Man, if there's any XJ I could have in the world, it would probably be a 99 Chili Pepper Red. And to have one in right-hand drive, that would be amazing. England. My name is Jake and I am from England and this is my 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ. 
It's definitely a work in progress. There's a lot of chips and things like the headlights and one changing. A year after it was built, it's been fitted with a LPG system to help with fuel economy. Once I find the time, I will be fitting a lift kit and new tyres on this Jeep. The interior is pretty basic, but I do like that retro look apart from the wooden trim, which I have started to change to a black trim. And this is a headlight adjustment button, and we have these due to strict driving laws in the UK. As you can see, it's a right hand drive Jeep, and this is standard with the UK models. So I hope you've all enjoyed my video and thank you Dan for inviting me to make this video, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Jake. I love that XJ. I love that video. Jake actually filmed and edited that video all by himself. I didn't do a thing to it. I just dropped it in my video. And there you go, man. That's awesome. So that's going to be it, guys. Thank you for watching my Jeeps Worldwide video. I hope you enjoyed it. And right now, I'm going to go send out that package that I was boxing up in the beginning. Those are door panels from this very vehicle. My original General Grievous door panels. Um, a guy, Curtis, uh, Sergeant Curtis, wanted to buy them. Uh-uh, man. Thank you to Joe because I'm paying it forward. Sergeant Curtis is going to get these door panels free of charge. Um, that's what I'm going to do for my Jeep community. And I want every single one of you guys to do something for your Jeep community. Let's stick together. Let's get through this. Uh, one day we'll be out Jeeping again. So until then, uh, keep Jeeping, keep the faith, and I will see you guys on the next project. Peace.